Hello everybody, hope they are good. Bitcoin has been very volatile in the last few days and it's been pretty much because of this week over here. We've been talking about this target since Tuesday, okay? On Tuesday we were around here and we were talking about the idea that if it was possible that Bitcoin could go back to 48k to fill this week. And the truth is that since that video, that's pretty much everything that Bitcoin has been doing, okay? It's been pushing price up towards this week. I also was updating through through the week and I told you that 50% of the week you could place a small size sell order, okay, a short order uh, with a small size because it's possible that Bitcoin could have just gone straight away to the 100% of the week. But at the 50% of the week, it's likely to see rejections, especially when you see a move like this, okay, that is basically overextended. Now, from that level, the 50% of the week at 48,000, we saw a drop in Bitcoin of exactly uh, $1,200, okay? That was a nice scalp. And then on Friday, I was telling you, hey, guys, be careful because if we see Bitcoin pushing price up again to the 50% of the week and it consolidates around there, then it's likely that we see one more push up higher, okay? Aiming for the 100% of the week. And that's what has happened a few hours ago. Check out this candlestick here, okay? Look at that spike. That's a spike targeting the 100% of the week. Now, it didn't get there all the way. We missed by $150, I think it was, or around yeah, $140. And the question is, is the week filled now? Has the week been filled? My answer is yes. And I'm going to justify it, okay? For me, a week has been filled once it has filled at least 50% of it. Now, that's what we've done. We've done, in fact, even more because that consolidation there that I was telling you, you know, there's going to be one more spike to hit uh, more of this area. And it pretty much filled the week at 90 something percent, okay? Because you can see that the week has been a price difference of 4%, okay? And we filled exactly 3.74%, okay? So it pretty much, pretty much everything. So to me, yes. The week has been filled. Now, we're going to talk based on liquidations, based on liquidity, based on what the order book says, based on what high block capital says, if there is a reason for the market maker to still push price higher to exactly 49k. Okay, and that would be exactly 100% of the week, right? But you have to be able to make that difference. There is no reason in terms of the week fill strategy to push price higher to the 100% of the week because we've already retraced at least 90% of it, right? So there is no any reason. In fact, if, if from here we saw this rejection at the 50% of the week and we retraced, there wouldn't have been any justification to hope for price to reach this area between 48 and 49K. The only thing that was telling us the idea that that was going to happen and we were going to retrace more of this week was this consolidation around the 50% of the week, all right? That was the only signal that was telling us, yes, we can retrace more of this week. But as of now, with a 90% plus fill, it doesn't need to get for that, ex for that extra 10%, okay? The week has been filled. I want you guys to have that clear. But again, we're going to go through Hablo Capital, the order book. We're going to see if there is still some liquidations up there. And if there is, then yes, you can justify that move to 49k still. All right. That's very important. Now, let's look at the structure. Please pay attention how the 50% of the week has been the new support. Check that out. Look at all those candles there testing as support. All right. It's quite interesting, but that happens quite a lot. And that is, again, what is telling you, yes, it's support. There is going to be a bit more of continuation, okay, aiming for uh, to fill more of this week. Now, the thing is that we've lost that support. And this candle, uh, of course, it hasn't closed yet. It still has a couple of hours. Um, it'll, it'll, it'll close during the New York session. It's closing below it. And it's testing our resistance, which is a bad sign, okay? So the four hours time frame is true. That it doesn't look that good. Now, if you go into the one hour time frame, we're going to see how what is still holding one important support, and that's the 50 EMA. Check that out, this purple line, okay? We've been testing a support once, two, three, four, five times. So for now, we can say that we shouldn't expect lower prices as long as we are holding above the 50 EMA. If we lose it, 
consolidate below it, or even test it at resistance, then yes, that'll be your short signal. Okay? That's important. In the 15 minutes time frame, the chart is also not looking that bad. Why? Well, because we created this week over here. Okay? You guys can see that. Uh, if we mark that week, you can see how we did a sweep of the lows. Then we tested a support. So, so far it's looking good, you know. You can do something like this still and go higher. So the one hour time frame is not looking bad. The 15 minutes time frame is not looking at is not looking bad, sorry. The four hours time frame he, he, he still is not looking too bad because he has enclosed this candle. But uh, this is the only cause of concern in the chart to me is the four hour time frame. I don't like that we've lost that support and that we are possibly testing our resistance in the next candles. All right. So pay attention to it. So for now, link that bit to the one hour time frame 50 main, lose the 50 main, the one hour time frame, then the chart might take a little drop. All right. And of course, altcoins are going to follow because if we check the Bitcoin dominance, we can see how the Bitcoin dominance keeps going up. Even if Bitcoin has, uh, I want you to check this out. Okay. Go to Bitcoin first. Okay. So bit, the top of Bitcoin was um, basically midnight on Monday and then it dropped. Okay. And it dropped uh, 2%. Now go to the Bitcoin dominance. Monday. Let me see, Monday at 12. So that's around here. Okay, that's around here, this candle here. We are literally the same level. We've only dropped a 0 0.08%. So we are literally the same level, okay? That is telling you that alts, altcoins, should be taking a little drop. Go to Solana. Look at that drop. I haven't checked this chart, okay? I'm just improvising. Polkadot, dropping. Um, I don't know. XRP is quite a stable coin lately, but still dropping. I don't know. Matic is probably dropping. Let me check Matic. Matic dropping on quite a lot. Okay. So if we lose the one hour 50 main, but for now, what I would like to see is first of all, Alcuin's recovering a tiny bit like this. Okay. Towards that level, recover it a bit. And then if at the same time, the timing is perfect and we lose the one hour 50 main Bitcoin. I'm not shorting Bitcoin. I'm shorting altcoins because the Bitcoin dominance is not dropping with Bitcoin. Okay. And that's why altcoins are taking a bigger dump. So, um, I mean, that's basically in terms of efficiency. You can, of course, if that happens, um, short Bitcoin, but you're going to have a bigger reward in altcoins, uh, at least right now. Okay. The same as for during the weekend, I told you on Friday, you know, if Bitcoin consolidates around here, then altcoins are gonna are gonna pump a lot and they did basically because bitcoin when bitcoin pumps like this crazy the bitcoin dominance is gonna do the same okay it pumps crazy too and altcoins are not gonna be able to pump that hard but once over the weekend bitcoin consolidates that's when altcoins can explode let's go to chain link guys um for example this chart i don't know look at this this was on saturday okay Look at this, basically Monday to Friday, not move. Yeah, there was some upside, some downside, but at the end, you know, if you check Monday at one in the morning and you check uh, Friday at midnight, basically it's the same level. It didn't move. But then Bitcoin consolidated over the weekend and that's when altcoins can go up. Look at that. Okay. So that's, you have to also understand this cycle between Bitcoin, altcoins, and the Bitcoin dominance. Because that's going to be able to offer you some trading opportunities over the weekend with altcoins. And then if you have to short, well, maybe you can sometimes choose altcoins over Bitcoin. Okay, so, um, I mean, I could make a whole video just about this. Let me know if that's a good idea. But the Bitcoin dominance is a very useful uh, tool that I like. Now, I would like to stop talking and go to high block capital and earlier book let's check out the liquidity guys and let's try to make some sense of it this is high block capital guys let's start with the liquidation levels we we used to start always with the liquidation levels okay the first thing i mean i mentioned this on yesterday's bitcoin soon the update the first thing that worries me a bit is all of these long liquidations at 23 billion 
okay? Of course, take these numbers with a pinch of salt because it's not a real number, okay? But based on history, based on my experience with this liquidation level chart, when the liquidation levels get, when the delta gets between 20 and 30 billion dollars, that is when it's selling you. Be careful because there might be a reverse in the chart, okay? There might be a short squeeze, or in this case that we have all the market positions in longs, there are a lot of late long positions, people that open long, long positions quite late, and there is a lot of FOMO kicking in. So there might be a, a, a long squeeze, okay? That's the opposite of a short squeeze. Long squeeze is when everybody's long, and then the market needs to do a flush to the downside to, to stop a lot of positions and reset the delta, okay? So be careful with that because $23 billion worth of long liquidations is quite a lot for, for high block capital, all right? Now, uh, you can see some spikes at the right of the chart. I can see already a spike here. Let me see that one there. 46,500, big spike there to the downside. We also have another one here at 45,600. And to the upside, I see also a few. Of course, it's a bit less than to the downside, but still, there are a couple levels that are very interesting. Check this out. 48,500, that's quite an interesting level. And you also have here 49,020 and 49,500. That one quite a lot less, okay? But 49,029, that seems to be the most interesting level, okay? So keep an eye on that, 49,000. Based on the liquidation levels, it still would make sense to push price up to 49,000, take all these remaining liquidations to the upside, those short liquidations, and then drop, reset the delta back to zero. And that would mean that Bitcoin would have to drop all the way to 46, 45k. All right? So quite an interesting chart. It's basically giving you a warning of a long squeeze, but also a bit of hope that Bitcoin could go to 49k first still, okay? before reversing. So be careful with your leverage, keep an eye on your stop loss, keep an eye on the chart if you don't have much screen time because things might change quickly, okay? Now, let's go to the liquidation heat map, seven days time frame. And yesterday we saw some liquidations at 49,000. They haven't taken them yet with that spike. That spike didn't get there. It got to 48,850. The liquidations are at 48,900. So they've missed by I look at the chart earlier and, and I think they missed by something like 40 dollars $40 difference. But what they think what they've done with this move by avoiding this uh, liquidation area is to increase the liquidity there. Because there are obviously now some people going short and those liquidations are stacking at this area. So guys in the heat map, we have 48,900, and in the liquidation levels, we have 49,000. So keep that in mind, okay? 48,900 and 49,000. There is a chance that we push price back up to that area, take all those liquidations, and then the final flush down. Or we just might drop from here. That's, that's, the, that's the good thing of the, of the chart, that we don't know what's going to happen first. But it would make sense, to be honest, to go to 49k still and then drop. So uh, keep an eye on, on that scenario. I don't see Bitcoin, uh, I don't know how to say this, okay? Bitcoin can, could go higher, of course. Um, and, yeah, and on Friday's video, I think it was, we saw in, in high time frame that there was a resistance of 52,000, and then the next resistance is 60k. So if we go above 52k, then we're gonna, we're gonna be pretty fast at 60k because there is not much resistance on the way, but could Bitcoin go to 52k in the short term? Um, it could, but I think it's more likely that we have a longer squeeze first, okay? That means that maybe we have the longer squeeze now and we drop to 46k, 45k, or we go to first to 49k and then we have the longer squeeze. But I personally see less likely that we go from here to 52k straight away. I don't know. If that was clear, I hope yes. Uh, but again, it's based on my analysis and also intuition. Now, I want to go to the other book to see if it says the same. This is the other book, guys. I'm sure that most of you are now familiar with this. Uh, for those that don't know the other books, uh, try to understand it as a book of orders, okay? A book of orders of all the traders that are trading in an exchange 
okay this order book takes uh, Binance by bid takes different exchanges okay um, takes all the orders that the retail traders are placing all right also not also retail traders but also market makers and that's the trick that maybe you see a spoofing well spoofing is quite a, a complex concept but it's basically uh, tricking the order book maybe you see that there is a sell wall and suddenly when we are about to hit it it disappears okay so you have to be careful with that but the order book is those orders those orders are limit orders the limit orders can be buy and sell orders can be liquidations can be stop losses can be take profits so it's kind of mixed up all in there and it's difficult to know which is which but we have the external tool of high block capital that only tells us about the liquidations and what did it say guys 49,000 and 48,900 look at the order book do you see where the liquidity is basically we have three red bars that's basically where the most liquidity is is is, is at the moment and that is between 49,000 and 48,900 and for well and 48,800 so in that area that we have so much liquidity we could confirm that those are going to be liquidations so uh also if you look at the order book and you look to the downside because the current price is at 48,000 if you look down in this in this chart you don't really see many orders to the downside do you okay because they are below they are basically below 46,500 and around 45k but there are also some long liquidations okay and those are going to be the target of a potential long squeeze all the way there so yes i mean we could say that the other book is showing a lot of liquidity at 49,000 and 48,800 in between that area of 200 dollars and in that same area we can see a lot of liquidations in Hablo capital so they are matching we're having the same information those are liquidations okay so yes there is a reason for the market maker that's a justification for them to push price higher to hit all those liquidations because when somebody gets liquidated all that money goes to the exchange okay and the exchange pays the market maker so it's a business guys it, it makes sense to attack those liquidations okay so i hope that was clear this three minutes explanation about the other book we want to go back now to the bitcoin chart so this is pretty simple guys we can say that where the 100 percent of the week is in that area between 49,000 and 48,800 that's there is a lot of liquidity up there there is a lot of liquidations so price could go there and from there i would say it's likely that we see a rejection okay of course i want to pay attention to what happens in the moment but um it makes sense for a long squeeze and i i have the feeling that it should happen a long squeeze but if we get first to 49,000, that's the area where i'm going to be looking for shorts okay uh, how i'm going to trade this well basically in the one hour time frame what i'm going to do is i'm going to open a small long position at the 50 ma targeting 49 between 49,000 and 48,800 so that's 200 dollar region okay with a small size okay then once in the four hour time frame if we see a candle closing back below this yellow line that's the 50 percent of the week at 48,000. because you can see that right now we are testing our resistance so if we close it above it or the next one we close above it okay then that's when i'm going to add size to my position that's called compound okay that's when i add size to my longs because i have more conviction that it's going to play out if however this is my invalidation if we drop below the one hour 50 ma and we start to do some consolidation below it or we tested a resistance for two or three candles that is basically when i'm switching to a short position in altcoins okay of course i have to first check the altcoins for example matic it, it would be a good one to short if at the right time well first thing is to recover here but then if once it's at the one hour 50 ma then bitcoin loses it's one hour 50 ma and we are testing it below it then for example that is when i'm short matic okay and i can tell you matic but i can also tell you for example polkadot or i don't know if you notice what the chart is doing is basically lower highs okay and also lower lows 
right so it's in a it's right now in a downtrend so if it recovers this for example this liquidity pool over here that's a liquidity pool this candle here that's going to be pretty much at the same time as the 1 or 50 may is going to retrace to this level so we test this level 1 or 50 may this liquidity pool then at the same time bitcoin loses its 50 ma we are consolidating below it or testing our resistance then that's what i'm basically switching to a short in polkadot in matic targeting new local lows okay uh, i want that to be quite simple i think it's uh easy to understand or at least i hope that so yep Keep an eye on 49,000, but also please keep an eye on that longest squeeze scenario, okay? If we go to 49,000, of course, I'm going to update again. If it happens in 24 hours, you'll have a new video tomorrow at the same time. Or if it happens today, then I post a, an update on Telegram or on X. Thank you very much for watching the videos, and I'll see you soon.